In this video, we will be describing our surgical technique for repair of complex anterolateral radial meniscus tears using a traction suture and a super hashtag orientation. From the Sports Medicine Institute in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. Our disclosures can be found on the AAOS website. Standard portals are made and a diagnostic arthroscopy is then performed. On inspection of the lateral compartment, a complex meniscus tear at the junction of the anterior and middle third is identified. Once the meniscus tear has been identified, a probe should be used to characterize the tear and determine if repair is feasible. Furthermore, the amount of gapping at the tear site should be assessed, and reducibility should also be assessed using a grasper. Once reduction can be confirmed, allowing for successful repair, the meniscus should be prepared for best biologic healing response. In this case, the area is RASP. Using a Smith & Nephew Novastitch Pro as an all-inside device, a single traction suture was placed to aid in reduction of the tear throughout the case. Here the traction suture is shown reducing the meniscus. Utilizing an outside end technique and lateral incision through the IT band, one vertical mattress suture is placed in the anterior limb using the meniscus mender from Smith & Nephew while the traction suture continues to hold reduction. An additional vertical mattress suture placed in the anterior limb as well as two vertical mattress sutures in the posterior limb are placed using outside-in technique with zone-specific aimers from Smith & Nephew. Then, using outside-in technique, a total of four horizontal mattress sutures are made over the vertical mattress in a tie-grip rip-stop type format to repair the meniscus, creating a super hashtag orientation. All sutures are tied through the inside-out incision underneath the IT band directly against the capsule in a reduced position. Here is an example of the final repair. Following repair, incisions and the knee joint itself are copiously irrigated. PRP is injected at the repair site and the portal sites are closed with nylon. Accessory incisions are closed in layers with ovicral, 2 ovicral, and nylon. Our post-operative protocol is for the patient to remain non-weight bearing for six weeks with a hinge knee brace locked in extension for the first two weeks with the goal of progressing range of motion to 90 for the first four weeks after surgery. At four weeks post-op, the patient will be transitioned to a lateral unloader brace. Here is a list of our references. We hope you have found this presentation to be helpful. We appreciate your attention. Thank you.